Good afternoon. My name is Griffin Beckham and I am attempting to do a TED talk on my community social advocacy project. This assignment was due um, for my last class at USC in order to get my MAT degree. <clears throat> uh, so here we go. Before I get started, I want to give you a little bit of history. I'm 44 years old and um, grew up Got my master or got my bachelor's degree in 1998, and was in a school environment that was definitely teacher-centered. In other words, the teacher got up in front of us, gave the lecture, and provided the assignments, and gave out the test, and everybody got the same thing. No differentiating, nothing of that nature. Not really able to ask questions unless it's about the material or question anything that was being said. So that's what I grew up with, and. It's funny because over my life, I have done many different jobs and being raised in the South, you grow up with certain kind of stereotypes or prejudices, prejudices I can't say the word, <laughs> but um, you have to be able to look past those. You gotta look past your own biases and you got to be able to learn and be willing to adapt and change. And I have. I've looked at a lot of things different in my life. I've, I've, um, I have um, come to realize that some of my views in the past were not right and opened my mind to new horizons. So getting into the community service project or social project, um, I was looking at what I could do. Well, my student teaching placement was at Chapin High School. Now Chapin High School is in a very wealthy community. It's a very high social economic um, arena. Every kid there, um, it was hard to teach them about different things because every kid there seemed like they had the same views, um, same views as their parents. Um, just really narrow-minded. So it was hard to get them to open up their heads and listen and think the opposite way but when they did you could actually see the light go off in their head so you know um one of the main goals of social justice is to give students as learners a processing the ability to transfer the world in which they lived and that came out of King King's um, writing 2013 uh, so you know I've read all the articles I've looked at different things of uh, about social justice and processed them and all that however the difficulty is is me being a white male older I'm already probably stereotyped that I think one way, or I may think the other way. So it's hard for me to go in and tell about um, slavery from a black person's point of view. You know, I can tell you what I've read, I can tell you the findings, I can give you data, but for me to actually be able to express the suffrage, suffraging that's coming out of my mouth doesn't quite go over as if you had somebody that was an actual slave, which are no longer in existence, as in back in the Civil War times. But, you know, you have people in the community that has, that can recite those types of feelings. And that's a good tool to bring into your classroom, to give the students a different point of view, and also to let the students see that you are advocating them to think different, that you're not trying to pass on your own ideas or your own thoughts or your own judgments. For a long time, we were subjected to be taught by one certain curriculum and we taught the standards and whatever the standards were is what we taught. We didn't want to variate from that because teachers were evaluated on the standards that they were teaching. So it brings into mind that research like Gloria Billing, Billings with the cultural, uh, cultural relevancy Pedagog pedagogy, I can't say these words, these academic words are hard for me, but it's the way you teach. It's the way your method is that you teach in your classroom, your disposition to all aspects of your appearance before a student. 
Um, it's also the curriculum you teach. How do you teach it? Well, one of the things that I wanted to focus on is having a safe classroom. And I'm not talking about safe as in physical, but of course I want that as well. But I'm talking about something where every student that comes in feels comfortable. They feel like they're not judged. They feel like they can express whatever they want to express. They can talk about what they want to talk about without fear or consequence. Now, in order to do this, you have to set some ground rules, of course. But my number one ground rule is respect. My number one ground rule is respect and respect everybody, regardless of what they say or what they do. Now, if it's something derogatory, of course, you will deal with that. However, um, students need to be able to express whatever they want to express and ask the questions. But also, I want them to think about answers to the questions that they ask before they ask it. So, in other words, they can think about both sides. They already get some started quickly thinking just on the questions they want to bring up. And having open discussions in class um, lets students hear different points of views from different backgrounds. You know, uh, um, a Christian's point of view of Christmas is totally different from a Jewish person's point of view of Christmas. But if you have that in your class, then you can associate that in your curriculum. And you can educate. You can educate kids to see beyond what the curriculum of everyday social studies is and have the actual influences that we have around us every day implemented within there just through their own prior knowledge and their own peers. With that being said, you know, it's good to have lectures in class because you've got to give the content out. You've got to do something of that nature, but not all the time. It's good to let the students take some control. By letting take students take some control and ownership gets them more involved, more interested. If you have ownership in something, you want to see it through. You want to see the outcome on it. So let students ask questions. Let them read the information and come up with the theories and the possibilities. Uh, Dr. Ergel did a fantastic showing of a picture. I think it was in the Civil War times, and it showed it from a... Patriots point of view and then it showed it from one of the royal soldiers point of view and then we also went into primary documents of diaries and and newspaper articles to get the different perspectives from the different sides well when you look at two different sides it brings a whole new meaning to one way you thought about something you may have not even seen the other side of the way somebody thinks about something so in order for you to achieve being culturally diverse and bringing out the social justice is to let students know that they can criticize, they can look, they can question, they can they can ask questions and they need to look. Who is writing this article? Who is telling you this? What point of view are they telling it from? What's a different point of view? All these th factors can go into the education of students. Now, as a teacher, no longer do I believe you need to stand up in front of the class, dictate what you want the students to write, and give out tests. I think those days are coming and going. Anybody can do that, and anybody can go online and find a whole curriculum that's just printed out there for you. However, you cannot have a group of students in your class that actually inquire and analyze documents themselves be recreated by another class of the same kind. They're all going to have different thoughts. They're all going to have different views and different aspects. So with that, you have to be able to guide them. And with a teacher being a tool more so for guiding and teaching, um, will help the students learn and retain more if they are digesting it themselves. Um, also, listening from your peers and listening from other people whether it's a black person or a white person or a Hispanic person, you can learn from each other. They might have different styles of learning and different styles of adapting to things. That's what is good about kids or students learning off of each other. Um, it may be easier for them to learn from their peers than it is from an adult. Just like my kids, it's easier for them to be taught something, even if I know exactly how to do it, 
by somebody else that they may respect or look up to than myself because they're like, oh, daddy's just saying something again. You know, he's not always right. Well, also, um, it goes back to the social justice part of it. Not every student is the same, especially at Chapin. I mean, most of those people, most of the kids at Chapin drive nicer cars than I do in the parking lot, and they're high school students. Well, there are some students that are not like that, but it's hard to see them within the crowd because students try to fit in. They try to go along with what their peers say and won't speak their own mind. So you have to look out for that as a teacher. You have to look out and be aware of what's going on in your students' lives and what's going on in, kind of in their head, almost like a psychologist. Now, that's not saying you gotta get weird with it, but you just need to know what's going on with them. That could be a cause of a problem while a student's not learning. Just like one of the kids in my class, he wasn't taking notes, he wasn't writing anything down, we didn't want to really just um, join groups, he was always laying his head down. But come to find out, he had a job after school working at Sonic and he usually closed it down and they had to stay real late, you know, clean up all the equipment and all that even after the store closed. So he didn't get home to really, really late. Well, that affected his time in class. So with that being said, you know, I had to differentiate the way he was learning in accordance to that. Not that I let him go with sleeping in class or something of that nature, but having that understanding that he may be tired, you know? So I might have to pair him up with somebody that maybe can grasp it a little bit better, that can tell him a little bit better of what's going on through his own, own peer's mind. That will help him out. That will put, put him back on an even playing field or an equal playing field. Now, the social project I picked out was the extended after school program. And basically what it was is this a student form project and they do tutoring after school. Anybody can come. If you want to go in there for math, algebra, calculus, Spanish, English, social studies, any subject, they will have somebody that will sit down with you and tutor you and help you get through it. Now, they might not be licensed tutors under that subject, but it's going to be students that understand it and can help the student out. If it is a subject that is not available for help, then the facilitator, the teach, Coach Strager, will try to find a student try to find a tutor that could help that student out. They're not just gonna let them go. They're gonna give them some type of resource or try to get some type of resource for them. Now, what's great is these students are teaching other students. There's no rules, there's no requirements, there's no anything for a student to come in. They get a little snack before time starts, but from five to 6.30, they are in there learning. Um, it is available to anybody. So. If a student doesn't have money for a tutor, they can come in there and get educated. If the richest person there wants to be tutored, they can come in there and get educated by their own peers and try to get that extra help. It's great for teachers to know this because they're doing this after school and they're doing this on their own time, especially a lot of the tutors are AP students and they already have a huge caseload of work, but they want to sacrifice their time and selfishly, get, selfishly give it back on to their peers by helping them achieve higher grades or higher goals and that benefits the school and in turn it benefits the community now with that being said some of the kids parents may own businesses or may have friends that own businesses they can go out and promote this program and see if they can't get donations for it see if they can't um maybe get some some donations of food or whatever it may be but by the school understanding that or by the community understanding what the program is and what it's involved and how it is achieving success with students that may not understand it but they're learning it on their own without having to pay for it without doing anything else is a great great thing for the community and it's open to anybody no matter your color race creed so to me, that is a social justice in itself there because you are putting kids on an even playing field. You're even giving the smart kids the ability to educate um, lesser smart kids to try to get their grades up. You know, it's not about a competition of who's the best in the school. It's really and truly the weak, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you can improve that weakest link, you can improve yourself in school. But that's kind of the TED talk I wanted to give today about Social Advocacy Project. I know I just touched on it very briefly, but 
in a lump sum it's just a tutoring session after school given by students to other students without any restrictions on it whatsoever and anybody is welcome